Welcome back. It is 1486, and last year was a really hard year for us. Um, so many people died. So many, so many people. I also realized, like, you've probably noticed, I did, like, miss a couple of Sims when I was rolling for everyone. We're just going to move on from that. Uh, they were just, like, towny Sims. So, you know what? They survived because of luck. So, um, yeah, we just have Mortimer left, which is kind of scary because... He is not only going to war next year, but he's also doing his young adult role. So that's two more chances for him to die. So, <laughs> oh gosh, I'm so stressed. Uh, we'll have to, let me know in the comments, if Mortimer dies, what should we do? Because I already said that Dante can't have children anymore because of Nina. Um, I don't know. Should should we go to like Alexander Goth II? I mean, should we go to one of the vampires those are kind of our only options here. So let me know what you think about that. And uh, let's let's get rolling. Also, Dante might die right now anyway. So <laughs> if Randolph survives, he's going to marry Liberty Lee. So although, should I even do that anymore? Like, what are, what are my options here? <laughs> um, Randolph is... No, because I want to kind of keep them in their own towns. So uh, Randolph is um, in Henford on Bagley. And so is Liberty... Yeah, and Odelgard didn't roll to have kids. So, yeah, we'll just have him marry Liberty. Oop, my mouse is super slow all of a sudden. Come on. Is the battery dying? You guys, it's stuck. Why is it stuck? Hello? My mouse is stuck. The light's still on. Oh, the light went off. No, the light went back on. <sighs> oh, there it is. That was weird. Okay. We're going to, we're going to, this is going to be much quicker than last time. <laughs> so no two, six, 11, 13, 14. Okay. He survived very closely. He survived. And then Dante needs to get a 10 or above to become an adult part two. And he didn't. So Dante is not an option any longer. He just died. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm so stressed. <laughs> we have lost so many Sims. Okay. So we have Mortimer. Technically, the next person would have been Dante. All of Dante's children are um, illegitimate, though, and that disqualifies... Why is this... Why did you do this? Uh, that disqualifies them. So uh, we have Francesca, but she's a vampire. We would have to cure her of vampirism. Madalena isn't even the real Madalena, so I don't really want to pick her, but we could pick her because then we'd have uh, Changeling... Uh, fairy babies and the pain family would keep living but I feel like maybe we shouldn't pick her because she's not really Madalena and then our other option technically uh, Tiffany did get where is Tiffany um, technically Tiffany did get um, legitimacy so because of that her children are in the running so those are our options we could go to Alexander Goth um, yeah I don't know let me know what you think uh, my hope is that Mortimer survives and even if he rolls to die next year I'm going to try and quickly marry Diana and then get her pregnant and if that baby lives that like we can keep moving with that baby but I don't know I don't know so let's uh let's hop into the game because uh as you remember last time Thomas gave over his estate to the Fletcher family because he wanted to you know make a promise about marrying Amelia, but then he died. So they still have that. And, uh, the house that we currently live in is on that estate. So we're going to have to see what happens with the ownership of that. So let's see if Mortimer has any problems coming up for himself. Alrighty. So this actually is a little bit of a shorter one than usual, but probably because we only have one person in our household. So I'm not even going to persistently cheat his needs. I am going to cheat his needs a few times, but also I'm going to let them go down a little bit because we might as well. I mean, I can take care of one sim. <laughs> so uh, he's just going to continue to practice his swordsmanship. He's still very sad, obviously, because he lost like his entire family in one go and he is so upset and he's having a really hard time he's just you know looking out over the water contemplating his existence <laughs> so he is just going to spend a little bit of time outside really just kind of mourning and thinking about his family and thinking about you know his aspirations and what he wants to do and you know how he's going to move forward meanwhile andrew fletcher 
comes over to our house and he's come to talk to Mortimer and we're going to have them come sit and talk. And basically, Andrew is going to tell Mortimer that uh, he's going to basically say, oh, hey, by the way, like you have, you know, X amount of time to move out of this house. And Mortimer is like, excuse you. <laughs> and so Andrew basically explains to him, like Thomas signed over his estate to our family. And, uh, you know, Mortimer's like, that was, be you know, first off, Mortimer only vaguely knew something was going on because he did walk in on them talking about it one time, but he was like, okay, well, he gave that to you under the impression he was going to marry Amelia, which he did not do. And then Andrew, you know, gives this whole like story about, well, he would want her to be taken care of, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, Mortimer's like, I don't think that's true because he knows that it's not like Thomas and Amelia were loves of their lives. He was just trying to pick a good wife for the future. And so Mortimer is freaking out because <laughs> Andrew has come and told him this and he doesn't know like what to do. So he's going to call over Eric to kind of get some advice because he's like, can they do that? Can they just like take my family estate, take my house? Like, can they do all of that? And so we're going to have Eric just walking through the forest, I guess. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so he's going to come over and Mortimer is going to ask him for advice because again, Mortimer was his squire when he was a little younger. And so they're going to talk about it. And Eric is basically going to say like, yeah, like he can do that. And he has all the paperwork and everything for it. And there's not much you can do about it in that case because Thomas did kind of like sign it over. So he's like, there's really not much you can do unless you're willing to like duel him or something over it. And I wouldn't really recommend that because, you know, right now the Fletchers are a pretty prominent family and they're one of the only families who, you know, didn't get hit too hard. They did have one of their sons die by the sickness. And, you know, Mortimer is just a teenager all on his own. Um, you know, his only support really is, you know, obviously Eric will support him, but like he has Dante, I guess, who is somewhere doing something, <laughs> you know, with probably someone's spouse. <laughs> so, um, he's just kind of having a hard time thinking about what to do. So he thinks to himself, you know what, everyone's got a secret. Maybe I can figure something out. Maybe I can find a way to, um, you know, get them to give it back to me. Maybe I can talk to Amelia and see, you know, what's going on, what, you know, exactly she told Thomas and all that stuff. And he is also thinking about Diana because today is Christmas. And because it is Christmas, they are going to, um, you know, have a, a ball. And so we are going to see everybody there. You know, everyone, this is our first Christmas after the sickness. So everyone is kind of, you know, looking for a reason to at least bring some joy into their their lives after everything that's happened. So um, he is asking Eric for help again. And Eric, you know, was like, oh, well, you know, I can always reach out to to some contacts and stuff. So to see what the deal is. So anyway, we're going to come in here. Mortimer is going to dance with Diana, of course, if, you know, everyone would just come inside. Um, there she is. She's so beautiful. I am so excited to have them get married. I am so nervous that neither of them are going to live through it because I'm pretty sure she has her young adult role shortly after him. So hopefully we can at least get a baby out of them. Like even if you die, if you could just have a child that lives, like if we have another Agnes situation, like our very first Agnes, like I can make it work. <laughs> um, but yes, so we are going to come over here and um, we are going to have them just relax and we are going to have everyone talking and so Amelia is there actually that's Lavinia right there she was hired as the entertainer um ghost <laughs> uh but yes so he's going to talk to Amelia and basically try and get some you know like pry some information out of her and he starts asking her about her past and like about what they did when they were in France and you know she mentions a few like people a few kind of things that seem suspicious like she so we know that Amelia did not know that her family was um you know trying to betray the crown and that they were on the run so we know she doesn't know that so she was be more willing to 
you know, kind of say things that maybe other members of her family wouldn't be as likely to say because they know that they're keeping secrets. Um, but she doesn't really know that she's keeping a secret. Also, apparently, you know, Neighborhood Stories has married her off again. That's just what my life is like now. Um, so, yes, he is going to have these conversations with her and kind of be getting some information out of her about her past, about, you know, and she's kind of con- he's kind of confused because she's like, oh, yeah, well, we weren't merchants until we came here. And, like, he's like, wait a second and that's kind of weird. Like, how'd you get all your money? And, you know, all that stuff. So he is starting to realize that there is something suspicious about their family. So that is what he's trying to get some information out of her about. But, uh, you know, the party's over. It's getting late. We are going to head home. So let's go do that. And we are going to um, head back to our house for the night before, uh, it is actually going to be Thursday, which is the day that Dante is supposed to pass away. So, uh, we'll deal with that shortly, but for right now, it's still Wednesday evening and, um, he's going to practice his swordsmanship. He's thinking like he might have to duel Andrew after all. He really wants to get his family's stuff back. And there's just, you know, so much going on. Like, uh, I mean, he's going to go away to war next year. You know, there's stuff going on with the king right now. Actually, I did start writing down because I do want to start including some, um, you know, some of the, the royalty stuff. I do want us to move soon. But I was looking up, like, what is going on in this world? And so at this point in time, um, Rich, King Richard had been killed in battle. And Henry the Seventh, a Tudor, has become king um and he he married um elizabeth something um (laughs) yeah he's become king and he marries elizabeth so that like to bring together their families and uh stop the war of the between their the yorks and the lancasters was it (laughs) i am not a history person please do not come for me um but yes, so they, they're getting, or they're maybe, the, yeah, they're getting married this year. So um, there will be another battle next year that's kind of, you know, supposed to cement uh, his place as the new king. Um, and so that'll be good for him. And that'll be good for us because, you know, new king, uh, new reign, new drama, and we will probably, I think we're going to move to like London. Um The only family I am going to make historically named is the royal family. All of the nobles and stuff will be your Sims. Um, So I am going to, not next year, because we're going to be away at war all year, so it doesn't really matter, but the year after that, um, I'm hoping to have them move, and then I will um, have your Sims be in that new place that we go to. So I'll, I'll get that all set up for that. But uh, yes, so anyway, uh, we have Mortimer who is um, sending out correspondences, trying to get more information on the Fletcher family, trying to find out what is going on with them, like, you know, maybe reaching out to some people who may have, you know, of the names that Amelia mentioned because their family was betrayed by like one of their friends to the crown. And so, um, you know, maybe Amelia mentioned like, Oh, we were so close to so-and-so and now, and now they're not. And so, um, you know, we'll see where that goes. Anyway, uh, only good things in the paper today. The ball was a big success. And so, Uh, Anyway, we're going to bring Dante over and kill him here because I want his gravestone and stuff. So Dante um, is passing away. Honestly, I feel like it would be like complications from the sleeping sickness. Like maybe he had gotten sick, but like hadn't died right away, but like became very weak and like just kind of, you know, then ended up passing away the next year. So um, he did pass away. And for some reason, when he passed away, maybe because of my MCCC settings where it's like, you know, inheritance. Um, but unfortunately we lost all our money. So what I'm going to say is that Mortimer is noticing that like some of his bank accounts are suspiciously empty or whatever it is. I know that that's not exactly how it worked back then, but like maybe he's getting notices that like things are happening in his land with like his leases and his people. And, um, that maybe, 
uh, he's realizing that like the Fletchers are like taking apart his land and, and getting rid of his tenants and selling off pieces of it because they have control over that estate. So he's realizing that they're getting rid of his money fast and he's worried about it because, uh, you know, if they end up squandering all his money, like how is he going to get it back? I mean, he has his own estate, which makes us like 10,000 small hands, which is excellent. Um, and so because of that, like, he's going to be fine, but he is worried that, like, you know, this is the Larkin estate that his family has had for a couple generations now, and he really just doesn't want to lose all that. But anyway, um, Diana's father has come over to talk to us. Maybe he heard that, like, Mortimer might be losing a bunch of his money, and Mortimer's like, relax, like, I still, you know, am knighted, and also I don't have any less than I would have had if my brother had survived anyway, but I'm going to figure out what's going on with that. And I will, you know, don't worry, your daughter will be taken care of no matter what happens. So that is what's going on there. So we're going to have a quick memorial for Dante where, um, you know, we're going to the graveyard and we are having some of his baby mamas and some of the people who he, you know, <laughs> broke up their marriages come and uh, mourn for him. So... That is what's going on here. I'm just going to move this tree so that I can, um, you know, do this and put the grave down. So that's really great. And then, oh, he's crying. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, like, Dante was then, like, the last person who lived around here who was part of Mortimer's family. Like, his uncle's gone, his cousins are gone, his father is gone, his siblings are gone, his uh, two aunts have moved away with, um, and then, you know, one of them died, and he doesn't even really know his cousins that well, the, the goths, so there's just like all of that going on, and he just really does not have anyone left where he is. I mean, he has Eric, who's been like such a great mentor to him, so he does appreciate that, but like it's not the same, and he is really having a hard time, and he, as he should, like I think he's probably going to be glad to go away to war and like get away from all of this for a little while, because it's just like depressing to be here all in this big house all alone, like he can't even sleep. Like, he is the master of the house now, but he can't even sleep in the master bedroom. He keeps sleeping in his childhood bedroom because he can't, like, even think about it. He's still so having such a hard time um, with losing his family. So that's what's going on there. He's just, like, having a hard time. And I really hope that, like, not even just going to war, because obviously that's, like, not really a good thing, but, like, it's kind of a good thing for him because that's how he's going to continue to increase his status. But not just going to war, but, like, you know, next year when he becomes a young adult, hopefully, um, and he, he can marry Diana and start a family of his own. And I think that that will go a long way to helping this, like, really, like, empty, lonely feeling of just being here with all this like look at all this like opulent stuff and he's just all alone like it's so sad <laughs> it really is so sad so um we are going to just head over to the Fletcher household Mortimer has gotten some information back from his correspondences and he found out the truth that the Fletcher family is indeed you know running from the French government and so he is very happy to bring Eric over there and be like Eric they are on the run from the government, like this is what's going on, and, you know, to help our relations with France, or, or to help the king, or whatever, you can give over the traitors, and, you know, I can get my stuff back, and we can all win, win, win here, so, um, plus Mortimer also, it's not that he has, like, a strong sense of justice, but he takes being a knight very seriously, um, because he, that is his, like, claim to a better life, and so, Anyway, I wanted them to fight, but for some reason they can't fight, so that's kind of weird. But anyway, uh, so we'll say that um, he confronts Andrew and is like, I know the truth about you and all this stuff. And so Mortimer is going to help, um, you know, basically help Eric arrest them, turn them in, um, you know, get them uh, to the crown where the king can decide whether he wants to, you know, negotiate anything with the French government or just hand them over or what. But um, so Mortimer is going to um, 
sword fight against Andrew. They're just fighting here. Andrew is like, no way am I going to let you turn me over to the French government. And so he fights back, but he loses like almost immediately because obviously we know Mortimer is like a master swordsman at this point. And so because of that, we have... Um, the Fletchers being arrested. Obviously, Amelia is so confused, but since, you know, she doesn't really have any proof that she didn't know anything either, so she's going to be sent back with the rest of them. So this is actually the last we're going to see of the Fletcher family. They got sent back to France, where, honestly, they were probably executed. Um, I don't know, maybe Amelia didn't get executed, but even if she didn't, she probably doesn't have anything left to her name, whatever. And then Mortimer did get his estate, his brother's estate back, but unfortunately... They had like sold off all the pieces and got, I don't know where the money went. They, they spent it. They buried it somewhere. He's not getting it back. So he did lose everything. And it's not good because that also means that he is probably going to lose his house. So honestly, I think it's for the best that he not live there anyway. That is like our catalyst for having him move because I do think that it's probably also good that he's not like kind of living in this space where all of his family died so there's that but like yeah so he he lost everything because they they took it so anyway uh in the meantime we do have randolph and liberty getting married obviously liberty is a little old for him but uh she'll live long enough to have the nine babies so i'm not really worried about that and uh we're marrying them and in the next one again we have a war we have mortimer's birthday we have hopefully a wedding maybe a baby we're just going to see how it goes i hope you guys are excited for it cross your fingers for me really positive vibes for mortimer positive vibes so anyway i will catch you in the next one